Hi, this is Jeff Zeig, and I'm in the offices of the Milton Erickson Foundation in Phoenix, Arizona. This is part of a series where I'm recounting some of my experiences with Dr. Erickson. I already recounted my initial um, request to meet with Dr. Erickson, and uh, I want to add some elaboration to that. I was uh, at 1972-73 and I had an internship as part of my master's degree program. I got a master's in clinical psychology from San Francisco State and my supervisor at the time, Charles O'Connor, a psychiatrist, introduced me to Erickson's writing. He picked up the book, Advanced Techniques of Hypnosis and Psychotherapy. I was thrilled by reading Dr. Erickson's papers and learning an approach to psychotherapy that was light years beyond anything that I could envision, and later found out that I had met once, because she was a friend of my cousin's, Dr. Erickson's daughter, Roxana, and so I had written a paper about Ericksonian utilization techniques and sent it to Dr. Erickson asking him, could I uh, please uh, be his student? And I want to recount the letter that he wrote back to me from November 9 of 1973. And should you ever come to Phoenix, Arizona and visit the Erickson Historical Residence, you could see the letter. It's a typed letter typed by his secretary, Dear Mr. Zeig, I'm very flattered by your letter, and while I'd be glad to meet you, the one or two patients I see a day would not be worth your while, nor could I use them for your instruction. Also, my general state of physical well-being is sufficiently rocky so that I'm not able to promise an hour or two days in succession. I would like to suggest to you that in reading of my work, you pay attention to interpersonal relationships intrapersonal relationships, and the snowballing effect of a change in behavior. One other matter I'd like to emphasize with you is that you recognize that patter, verbiage, directions, or suggestions are awfully unimportant. The really important thing is motivation for change and the realization that no one person ever knows his true capabilities. Sincerely, Milton H. Erickson, M.D. Now, I remember opening that letter. I was sitting in my car, and I was stunned that Dr. Erickson would personalize a letter to an admiring student and not only personalize it, but add wisdom to it. And I swear to you, I must have read the letter 15 times. I was so uh, you know, struck by it that here I was, a, a uh, aspiring student and writing to a master who was uh, taking his time to make things both wise and personalized. And that propelled me to come a month later to Phoenix, Arizona and visit Dr. Erickson for the first time, which led to the eventual inception and, and formulation of the Milton Erickson Foundation. These were part of the seemingly little things, these little things that built up very quickly, these little ways of being very precise in his communication, very other focused in his communication. And I hope some of the spirit, not just the technique and the remarkable inventive genius of Dr. Erickson is transmitted through these videos, but something about the person who Dr. Erickson was that he would uh, take his uh, precious time to personalize things in such a precise way to reach somebody else's spirit, to reach somebody else's heart, to help to someone to uh, feel a little bit better uh, about his place on the earth. This is Jeff Zeig. Here I am in Phoenix, Arizona at the offices of the Milton Erickson Foundation. Thank you.